어떻게 널 버리고 나 혼자 도망가겠어 걸 아무 때난 내게 전화해도 상관없어 너 걱정하지 마 나에 대해서 난 어른 이고 입이 다 컸어 시간은 남은 매자 한게 벌써 널 버리고 나 혼자 도망가겠어 걸 아무 때난 내게 전화해도 상관없어 Hello, hello, and welcome back. Today we will jump into the second part of our adventure in Seoul. We got a lot of positive feedback from the other video, and we are really happy to share this journey with you. Thanks a lot. Gyeongbokgung Palace is considered the main and largest of the five grand palaces in Seoul, Korea. It was the principal royal palace during the Joseon dynasty and served as the residence for the kings and their households. Nowadays, it primarily serves as a historical and cultural site for tourists and visitors to explore and learn about Korean history. What is interesting is that many visitors to Gyeongbokgung Palace choose to wear hanboks, which are traditional Korean clothing. It's a popular and immersive way to experience the historical ambience of the palace. Several rental shops in the vicinity offer a wide range of handbooks for rent, allowing visitors to dress up and explore the palace grounds in traditional attire. The palace entrance fee for adults is 3,000 won, which is around 2 euros. However, if you are wearing a handbook, you can enter for free. The average cost of renting a handbook is between 10 to 15 euros for a few hours but imagine you get to take nice pictures and adds to the charm of your visit we didn't rent it out ourselves uh, because there were like 30 degrees outside and <laughs> couldn't really bear the heat also if you watched some k-drama shows you can definitely enjoy the romantic and nostalgic atmosphere associated with k-dramas when exploring such historical rich sites there are many good Korean series that you can find and one that we really really enjoyed and we really recommend you is The King's Affection, where the action happens during the Joseon dynasty. The show had a very intriguing story about how the sister of the late prince has to take his throne from a very young age. After all, Gyeongbokgung Palace is a wonderful gem of Korea that has to be visited at least once in a lifetime. So if you like what you saw so far, definitely go and check it out.
So going to a Korean barbecue restaurant was definitely in our list. This concept is so cool. I know they are in different countries as well, so not just in Korea, but at least for us, it is not really that common. For example, in Romania, we would typically go outdoor during summertime to grill some meat with friends and have fun. There's really not that many restaurants like where you can actually do this indoors. We've seen this uh, barbecue places everywhere before coming to Korea, especially in TV shows or in YouTube videos. We really wanted to try it as well. There's also a couple of them in the Netherlands, but we never really got the chance to go to one. So essentially, Korean barbecue is a place where you still have the joy of grilling your own meat, but most of the time you would grill meat that has been well seasoned, that has been marinated. And besides that, you also get a lot of banchans. If you remember our last video, we talked about banchans, which are essentially small side dishes. It's basically a perfect place to go out with friends and have fun and eat good food. Again, Korean food is all about sharing and coming together. If you will ever come to Korea, you definitely have to try a Korean barbecue place. For this one, we had our own private chef. I don't know what to call it. A private grilling chef but most of them so if you really want to try and experience that for yourself you should definitely do that <laughs>
The experience was definitely haunting, especially seeing the bullet marks on the old bridge, the train, and all those peace messages shared by the families that were separated during the war. It's an experience that you should definitely try at least once in your lifetime. So after spending some time at the Imjingak Peace Park, it was time to cross the Imjingak River, which is one of the most heavily fortified rivers on the planet. This river flows from North Korea, by the way. Once we crossed it, we were in a special military zone, which was not the DMZ yet. But our first destination was the third infiltration tunnel, which is in the actual DMZ. So our first stop was the third infiltration tunnel, as you just saw here. Unfortunately, we were not allowed to shoot any videos or take any pictures there. That is the point where we were the closest to the actual border. I believe that we were around 170 meters close to the actual uh, demarcation line. Our next stop was the Dora Observatory, which is the actual place where you can see North Korea. So if you ever come to South Korea and if you have ever been interested in North Korea, it is closest you can be and to actually see North Korea. In this place, you'll find a lot of information about the armistice agreement, the ongoing quest for unification. And you can learn about diplomacy between the two countries and also hopes for a peaceful future. But it is also the place where you see the difference between the two countries and the propaganda from the North Korean side. You can see Kaesong city from a distance and also a couple of villages. You can also see the Kaesong industrial area, which at one point was an industrial area where also South Koreans could go. And there's also a fake village. From what I've understood, this village was created a couple of decades ago when South Korea was still struggling. It was to show that North Korea is better and is richer. So maybe at that point, all the South Koreans looking there, I guess, seemed interested but obviously the story is different now south korea it's much more developed and as you can imagine that village is uh, abandoned and almost in ruins nevertheless we were always intrigued by north korea mainly because we come from an ex-communist country i do believe that the dictator of romania was a good friend of kim il-sung which was the first leader of north korea so that is why we were interested in seeing you know uh, at least getting close to north korea on the observatory, there is a deck where you have a bunch of binoculars, whatever they're called, where you can actually take a closer look at the landscape. And we saw a bunch of people walking. We saw a bunch of people cycling. I don't think we saw any car. I believe someone saw a bus, but we didn't see it. Another person saw a motorcycle, but we only saw people walking and cycling. It felt interesting, surreal, but it also felt sad. We do hope that the situation will f get fixed in the future. Nobody knows if it will, but we really hope for a peaceful Korean unification where everyone will be, become happy and the outcome will become positive for all sides. Nevertheless, if you want to experience the DMZ for yourself, I would recommend you to book in advance, especially if you want to go to the JSA. Unfortunately, when we went there, it was closed, so we couldn't visit. But even if it would be open, I would recommend you to try to book at least a couple of months in advance because that one is very popular. For this tour, I think we paid around 40 euros per person and it was with VIP travel and we definitely recommend it. I'm 
모습이 보인다고 너도 이미 알겠지만 Now s a don't look at me uh. 